Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, a principal architect at Dell, and one of the leads on the Crowbar project. And I want to take a second to give you some dev tips. This is a very dev focused um, video. If you're interested in doing development work on Crowbar, especially on the UI, this is the video for you. So the first thing I want to do is uh, show off one of the things that we're working on. Uh, in this case, we are we slipstream changes in by using development mode. So if you'll notice, the menus here uh, don't have any submenus. If I wanted to enter into development mode, which is very helpful to do for um, working on uh, the UI, changes the characteristics of how the Rails server operates. Um, we have a couple of tricks that that I use to to make development easy. What I've done is this is the virtual machine running my admin server. I am already in Opdel Crowbar Framework, uh, and if I look here, I have a Rainbows config dev config. This should be created automatically. If it's not, you're going to want to create it. I'll show you what it looks like. So in this file, the main thing I'm doing is I am making sure that I have my login going to the development log. Other than that, pretty much the same as the uh, other file. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start... Um, I'm going to start the dev server. Now what I've been doing is I've sort of built up a cheat automatically installed in the bin directory is this dev mode that does a couple of things to get you ready for dev mode and starts the rainbows server which is the web server that runs the crowbar web server uh, in dev mode. Um, so all you have to do is slash slash bin slash dev mode and you're running the uh, crowbar server in dev mode. So if I go back here, refresh my screen you'll see I actually get different behavior. Uh, we, we slipstream new changes in using dev mode because we're trees live, so we, we don't want to be disruptive in uh, how things are operating. And it's going to take a while because that's this is the first hit against that dev server. And now I have my extra menus. So these are, these are hidden under dev until we've uh, QA'd them sufficiently. And I just went to bulk edit. This is a feature that we've been bringing in. Um, this shows me my unallocated nodes. If I do a show all, I can now change. Um, I can now see all the nodes that are in the system. I can edit descriptions, change the um, BIOS. You can see I actually have a missing file here that I'm going to have to get these uh, into the localization files, which is very easy to do. Um, so I have a new commit to make after this video. Excellent. Uh, but so here's the trick that looks great but if I'm using this what I really want to do is I probably also want to watch the logs going by so I'm going to use putty to log into my crowbar VM so from this VM uh, I've now SSH back into the same machine now I effectively have two terminals going it's nice to be uh, root so I'll be root and here I'm going to go to the same thing opt Dell crowbar framework Excellent. So I'm here. Now, if I tail the log, uh, it's the development log, now I can actually see the logs as the system's operating. Um, and this it can be in a, in a regular system, can be very busy. I'll show you my virtualized, my VMware workstation environment. So you'll notice I have a couple of nodes in that are getting built and deployed. So all that is going to be reflected as noise in these logs because all those VMs are checking in against the uh, crowbar server. All right, so that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is how to install some bar clamps. Uh, this one, what I'm going to use for this are two bar clamps that are specific to Dell. So in this case, I'm going to create an ISO. Of those with those two bar clamps in it, pretty straightforward process. I'm using uh, Power ISO it's off the screen right now, so I'm going to put these in temp create an ISO file for this. Excellent, it's doing a whole bunch of work behind the scenes. Uh, you couldn't see here's the actual UI for Power ISO, I don't need it anymore, I'm done with that. But what I do want to do is come back to my VMware install over here. So here's what I need to do. I'm going to take that ISO I just created. 
I'm going to attach it to this VM. So this should, here's my ISO. That's nice and all right, I'm going to connect it. To do this, I'm going to have to stop this uh, dev server because this dev server is operating in uh, user mode, not as a service. Uh, if I wanted this to put the system back into production mode, all I have to do is say service crowbar start. That's going to restart the server in um, production mode. All right. And then I'm going to mount the ISO to the mount point. No surprise there. Everybody's happy. Okay, so now this new ISO that I created is um, enabled. Let's see what's in there. There's my two uh, bar clamps. So I'm going to jump over to the bin directory where I have the bar clamp installers. Great. So here's all my bin files. Before I do this, I'm going to come back to the website. The bar clamps I'm installing provide a new skin for Crowbar, so it's useful to verify that I've got the old skin. Let's jump over here. I could do this from my uh, SSH session also, of course. Uh, and I'm going to do a bar clamp. Sorry, I'm in the directory. Bar clamp, install. And now I'm going to install from mount CD-ROM. And we'll do the Dell branding skin uh, bar clamp first. So that's the right directory for it. Service crowbar restart. When you're in production mode, you have to remember to stop and restart the server for changes like this. Otherwise, it won't pick up all the differences. So now we've got the Dell skin installed. So it changed out the skin. It added a EULA menu. Um, that's pretty much the extent of the Dell skin. Uh, I can do the same thing and add in the overview page, which brings in the Dell marketing um, overview page for uh, OpenStack. I have to also restart the web server. No surprise there. So I just finished the refresh. Now I have the overview page uh, that we use as an addition in our OpenStack deployments. Okay, in this case, uh, I haven't, I don't have any OpenStack components installed, so you'll see minimal capabilities here. As a matter of fact, it's interesting to note I started with the minimal Crowbar install, uh, which is one of the things that's available uh, as a build option. If you build without any branches, you'll get the the basic uh, bar clamps. I highly recommend starting from that version if you're going to be building your own bar clamps that don't rely on. Um, an, another suite. So in those bar clamps you'll see just this minimal list uh, instead of the extra open stack that you'll normally see in, in my videos. Uh, so that is the end of adding bar clamps. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to show was the trick I use uh, for syncing files. So as I do my editing what you will see so here's my editing. I like to use E when I'm on Windows. And as I change files here, so let's see, here's that, that bulk edit list page uh, that you won't be able to see. So we're gonna we're gonna change a page in a second. But what I like to do is I like to use WinSCP. So here is my WinSCP session. I've already logged into the machine and I have this is my path for editing crowbar on my local machine and this is the remote path Opdel crowbar framework. Uh, I usually turn on the synchronized browsing so if I want to drill into uh, different components I can so for example if I was in app over here they would both stay the same. Very convenient to do that so in this case um, we had found that there was a missing localization. Let's fix that right now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on, I'll do it through the commands, uh, keep remote directory up to date. I'm saying to synchronize these directories, update the subdirectories. I do not synchronize on start. That causes all sorts of problems for me. I say start. 
And now, anytime I'm in my text editor over here, here's my localization file. Anytime I edit over here, I'll show you so we can try and see both things at the same time. If I hit save over here, it's going to automatically go in and change. Now one of the things that that dev sh script does is it fixes permissions to make that step easier. Respect, speaking, speaking of, I'm going to go back into dev mode. So let's see, from here I want to be back in, uh, the dev mode script is right here, I'll show you what it looks like. It's just a couple of lines uh, that stops the uh, crowbar service and starts dev mode and fixes permissions. No surprise. So let's go back to crowbar framework. Let's do our dev mode shell. So now I'm running in user mode, which is handy for picking up quick changes. And let's find that defect again. That defect was in the nodes bulk edit section that I'll show you. Now here's the trick. Uh, because I overwrote the um, localization file with the, the base one, I lost localizations that had been brought in by my bar clamps. Completely normal nothing to freak out about. This styling is um, what we use to indicate missing localizations. Once again, as you add bar clamps, they bring in localizations that aren't in the base. Uh, let me show all here so I can find my bad missing component. So in this case, our localization, our translation is virtualization and single RAID 10. Um, So those are coming as root environments. I actually don't want them as root, so I'm going to end up making some changes. But I'll, I'll fix it the simple way, just to show you how this works. Um, those items are en dot, and then they're in the global list. So there's actually an item that says global. And if I put in the word capital virtualization, foo, and then we'll call this one single rate 10. Call this one bar. My punctuation reversed, of course. Let's fix that. I hit save. Uh, whoops. Files are automatically transferred. And then the next thing that we will, we're going to do is refresh over here. There you go. So now here's our settings matching what I'd put in the localization file. Obviously not quite your normal dev process, but this is showing you how I synchronize files back and forth against a system running in virtualization. Hope these tips are helpful. Uh, there's one last thing I wanted to add. Uh, if you're interested in the Purple Bunny, which uh, I am, he is hiding here if you know about Konami. Thank you very much. Have a great day.